hello students so in this video lecture series so today we're going to discuss about the testing of ic engines so means in the previous video lectures we have discussed about some parameters performance parameters of the ic engines like indicated power brake power friction power and how to find the mechanical efficiency volumetric efficiency and thermal efficiency so we are gone through the uh, different parameters of the ic engine okay performance uh, parameters of the ic engine so at the same time we know that what is indicated power what is the brake power what is the friction power okay so then how you going to measure this brake power indicated power and the friction power so we may going to use some devices so because so we have discussed about the brake power brake power means what it is the power available at the end of the crankshaft okay that is a brake power so that is again it depends on the torque okay so that brake power or the torque output torque of that crankshaft how you going to measure so that will discuss in today's video lecture series okay so that is what the first is that torque and its measurements okay so how you going to measure that output torque of the crankshaft or the ic engines okay so in order to measure that torque okay or the brake power what you can say it is simply so they are going to use the rope brake drum dynamometer so this is a one device rope brake dynamometer so you can see this device in our a uh, heat engine lab okay that is in ic engine lab that is energy conversion lab okay is there the lab in this semester you may going to study it that so that is what the rope brake dynamometer so this is a device okay it is connected to the crankshaft so with the help of this rope brake dynamometer you can easily find the torque of that crankshaft so how that device or the rope brake drum works i'll just explain in simple words here so i think you people may uh, go through this figure here sketch diagram what you can call so this is the inside part is a crankshaft okay so here simply that name itself is indicating rope brake and dynamometer rope means what it is a long some long length of rope is there okay with some diameter that rope will get rotated turns around the some rotating turns on the crankshaft or the output shaft and one end of that rope is connected to the spring balance and other end is connected to the weight dead weight so i'll just explain you this is what the schematic representation of the uh, rope brake dynamometer here okay this is a side view there is a crankshaft or the output shaft so over that shaft so you are rotated some number of turns of this rope and one, because you know that that rope is having the two ends one is connected to the uh, connected to the spring balance and other end is connected to the loading device that is a lower portion here so you go on putting the weight here okay that is a, this is spring balance reading so you will come to know that how much weight will put here 1 kg 2 kg that will going to represent in this uh, uh, what a spring balance reading okay this is about this schematic explanation of this rope drum so i'll just explain you rope brake as shown in this figure in a simple device for measuring the brake power of an engine okay it consists of number of turns of rope wound around the rotating drum attached to the output shaft okay so then one end of the rope is connected to the spring balance and other end is connected to the loading device the rope is absorbed the friction between the rope and the drum okay so how you can so whatever the power absorbed by this rope that is the friction between when the friction between the rope and the drum okay the drum uh, therefore the requires cooling okay this is how this uh, brake ro rope brake dynamometer works then how you find this uh, torque by this uh, rope brake dynamometer so that is torque t is equals to w minus s w minus s means w is the load on a brake drum how much weight you are putting on this uh, loading device so that is a w that is load in newton or kg even if you are applying it in kg you can convert that into newton by multiplying 9.81 
okay so minus s s is a spring reading spring balance reading in newton okay so into db plus dr divided by 2 db means what that is capital db means what diameter of the brake drum and uh, see so this dr is the diameter of the rope divided by 2 so if you will put all these uh, uh, values and you will uh, uh, directly come to know that what is the torque output of that crankshaft or the output of that engine with the help of this rope drum dynamometer in most of the engines i see engines to measure the uh, uh, brake power they go for this type of devices only brake drum dynamometer only so next one more device they are going to use to measure the uh, brake power or the friction power is that prony uh, that is uh, uh, torque is that prony brake drum dynamometer this is also similar to this only as there is simple change in the sketch you just i'll just explain you first how this sketch will be there or the figure of this uh, uh, what a prony brake drum dynamometer see here and this side this is a ply wheel ply wheel is a big wheel this is a big element or the component in the engine cylinder so i think all of you know that what are the applications of the ply wheel it stores the energy okay that is a ply wheel so over the ply wheel there is a brake shoes are there this is a wooden brake shoes they are attached and these brake shoes are held against the ply wheel with the help of this spring and bolt arrangement here nut and bolt arrangement here okay and one end of this uh, load arm is there you can take an out and other one end of the load arm is connected with the hook so to in order to put the weight this is a simple representation schematic representation of the uh, what prony brake drum dynamometer then how it will works i will explain so one of the simplest method of measuring the brake power this is with the help of prony brake dynamometer okay is to attempt to stop the engine by means of the brake on the flywheel because initially we know that once the engine start started then it start rotating that flywheel we can stop that flywheel rotation or the engine we can stop how we can stop that engine by applying the brake brake how you going to apply the brake it will put low load on this uh, uh, load arm then automatically that pressure will transfer to this uh, brake shoes that brake shoes will press against the ply wheel then that will try to stop the rotation of the ply wheel so this is what the stoppage of that engine okay then uh, brake uh, by the help of uh, that is attempt to stop the engine by the means of the brake on the ply wheel okay so pony brake diameter consists of the brake shoes made up of the wood and these two clamped on the rim of the ply wheel by means of bolts okay the pressure on the brake shoes is adjusted by means of the nut and spring the load bar is extended from the top of the brake and a load carrier is attached to the end of the load bar when the wooden block were pressed against the ply wheel by means of the load applied at the end of the load arm the brake shoes absorbs the friction to engine torque and converts into a friction okay counter uh, weights are attached to load arm to balance the load okay so this is how this uh, prony brake drum dynamometer works okay so then torque can be calculated using the formula that is t is equal to w into l w is the load on the brake drum and l is the length of the load arm similar way hydraulic dynamometer and electric dynamometer can be used to determine the brake power so for that case you can go with these numerical equations okay so these are the two methods they may used to measure the brake power so that is a rope drum by dynamometer and the frony brake drum dynamometer if i i explain these two methods very clearly here you can understand if you have any doubts so you can uh, raise the doubts okay so at the same way so how you going to measure the friction power or the indicated power that is very important again okay already as i told previously there are two three types of powers in ic engine that is brake power indicated power and the friction power so now you are uh, come to know that how to measure the brake power okay with the help of rope drum dynamometer or the frony brake drum dynamometer in similar way how are you going to measure the friction power or the indicated power so again for that you are going to use a different methods to measure that so in order to measure the 
the friction power or the brake power they are going to use a different methods under that the first method is the Williams line method mode, mode, most test and the motoring test these are the three tests they may use to measure the friction power or the indicated power under that the first one is the Williams line method Williams is the name of the person who work on that method to calculate the indicated power or the friction power ok I just explain you so this Williams line in the Williams line method they will going to plot the graph by taking the parameters brake power on the x axis and the fuel average fuel consumption in the y axis ok with these two considering these two parameters they plot the graph ok I just explain you in this method the gross fuel consumption versus the brake power at a constant speed of the engine is plotted and the graph is extra extra plotted back to zero for uh, fuel consumption as shown in the figure so this is a positive area where that graph will get plotted you can extra plot that to the towards the negative sign where that will cut the brake power line so that difference you can take it is a uh, friction power here from the zero to negative axis okay so this is what the indicated friction power they are going to measure with the help of this Williams line method ok this is one simplest method they are going to use for to measure the friction power so next uh, one more test is the most test this is very important so this test will going to conduct in our energy lab also we have the experimentation so on that so it is a simple test I will tell you how to measure this indicated power or the friction power with the help of more test in the more test what will happen more test is used to find the close estimate of indicated power of a multiple cylinder engines basically this test is applied for the multi multiple cylinder multi cylinder we are using in the engines so in that case if you want to measure any friction power or the indicated power of that particular cylinder, cylinder so you can apply this more test ok in this test engine is coupled to a suitable dynamometer and the brake power of the engine is measured by uh, running it at a constant rated speed initially what will happen so in order to use this more test to find the indicated power of the any multiple cylinder engines so first you can what you can do is you can connect with the any one of the good dynamometer for that so initially when all the cylinders are working at a constant speed or at an average speed then you can measure its the output power total output power or the brake power so then after that once you come to know that so suppose you can assume that there are four cylinders in the engine so simultaneously once you start the engine all the four cylinders will start working and the uh, power is going to generate in all the four cylinders so then you will get the average or the final output by the crankshaft so that output you can just measure and uh, record somewhere and then in next step what you can do is so cylinder 1 is cut off by short circuiting the spark plug in case of petrol engine or by disconnecting the injection injector in case of diesel engine so you can out of 4 engines or the 4 cylinders so you can cut off 1 cylinder how you going to cut off means you can make it a deactive means you, that you cannot produce any power from those cylinder so how if it is a SI engine then you can uh, short circuit the spark plug if it is a CI engine or the diesel engine you can just stop the injector ok so then as a result what will happen in the engine performance of the engine cylinder cut off the engine speed will get drop automatically ok suppose if the four cylinders are working simultaneously you are getting 2000 rpm then out of that one cylinder will get cut, uh, cut down then automatically speed will get changed ok it will get decreases the engine rated speed is restored ok so that thing will come to observe if the speed will get reduced then you can regain that speed how you can regain so engine rated speed is restored by reducing the load on the engine ok so suppose is initially if the all four cylinders are working so you are having the, the engine speed is 2000 rpm so after that one cylinder will get cut off then what will happen this speed will get reduced to the uh, 1800 or 1700 or 1900 something some uh, speed rpm will get reduced you can regain that speed to the original to the 2000 rpm only how you can regain that speed so you can reduce the load on the engine automatically 
you can reduce some load so then automatically with the help of three cylinders only you can regain that original speed okay then uh, BP brake power under this load is determined the determined and recorded so once you can regain that speed to the original speed then after that you can measure the brake power okay that is you can take as a brake power one that is cut up cylinder brake power it is the cylinder one is restored and cylinder two is cut up then what you can do in the next step so in previous step whatever the cylinder will get cut up you can regain that you can start uh, working that and another cylinder can cut up the engine speed again varies by adjusting the load on this engine speed is brought back to the rated speed at a new BP that is brake power 2 is recorded in the same way the process will get you can cut up all the four cylinders at once one another the other and then you can find the its indicated powers then considering the four cylinder engine that is a let you can indicate that IP1, IP2, IP3, IP4 means this is the indicated power of first cylinder second cylinder third cylinder and fourth cylinder and similarly these are friction power fp1 fp2 fp3 fp4 means friction power of the first cylinder second cylinder third cylinder and fourth cylinder when all cylinders are working so initially you're not going to cut out any cylinder if all four cylinders are working then what is the brake power bp1 bp2 bp3 bp4 then bp is equals to means bp1 is equals to what ip1 minus of fp1 and bp2 is equals to indicated power of the engine cylinder 2 minus friction power of the cylinder 2 okay like that this is equation number one when the cylinder one is cut off then b1 that is a brake power of the per cylinder is equals to bp will become zero so will not have any power output from the cylinder one so it's a zero plus bp2 is there bp3 is there bp4 is there and b1 is equal to similarly you can change this ip indicated power from the per cylinder is zero minus friction power of one so in that same way we are going to represent i will take this equation as a two subtracting equation two from the equation one so what we will going to get is bp minus b1 is equals to ip1 in the it means that indicated power of the per cylinder or the cut up cylinder is equals to bp bp means what brake power of the when all the cylinders are working minus this b1 b1 means what when brake power of the engines when the per cylinder will cut up if you take that difference then it gives the indicated power of the per cylinder okay so this is how you going to calculate the indicated powers similarly when the cylinder uh, 2 is cut off and following same principal equation you can have BP is minus BP2 is equal to IP2 BP minus BP3 is equal to IP3 in the same way you are going to find the indicated powers of all four cylinders individually then total indicated power of the engine is given by IP1 plus IP2 plus IP3 plus IP4 then friction power of the engine is given by friction power is equal to IP minus BP this is how you are going to find this indicated power or the friction power by using this more test ok this is one method is very important method to measure this uh, power and last is one more method is motoring test is very simple in motoring test what they are going to do is in the motoring test the test engine is run at the constant speed and load condition for the same time for load conditions for some time once the operating condition reaches steady state the power of the engine is measured using electric dynamometer okay in the motoring test what you can do is you can start the engine and allow that engine to run at some constant speed rated speed with some load condition and you can observe that once you come to know that this engine is uh, reaches its uh, steady state working condition then you can measure its output power using some electric dynamometer that is the first condition after that what they can do in the second step the fuel supply to the engine cylinder is cut off 
okay okay you can stop the supply of fuel to the engine or to the cylinder you can just cut up and the dynamometer is replaced by an electric dynamometer so in the previous method so to measure the output power so are using the dynamometer that dynamometer is replaced by the electric dynamometer by suitable electric switches devices the electric motor drives the engine at the same speed at which it was previously running so one should cut up the supply of fuel to the engine okay so then what you can do you can connect to that engine with some electric dynamometer you can with the help of some switches and electric motor is connected to that electric dynamometer this electric motor will start it will run that engine okay it will bring it to the original speed previously speed okay then the power supply to the motor is measured so because in order to achieve the speed of the engine what is running previously so whatever the power will go to supply to the electric motor that power you can take on as an friction power of the engine this is very simple way to measure the friction power of the engine by using motoring test okay these are the different methods they are going to use for the measurement of the friction power or the indicated power or the brake power thank you